when 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 the professor doesn't have a tip, he's not gonna. Um, you can't force the tip. You can't. Uh. With some lube, you can. <laughs> hey, there it is. <laughs> or spit if you can't afford it. Uh. Notice even even oh, when it's Jesus. not about money, he had to say if you can't afford it. Jesus. So that is that a t- is that yeah? Your t- there you go. That's <laughs> just a Pablo Chipo tip. Can't afford lube, spit and polish. Still spit. So we're gonna throw it to Pablo regardless because we have some mail bag. And speaking of yes. bags, <laughs> exactly. Let's get right into the lube. This first one is <laughs> from a friend of ours. Oh no. Her name. Oh. Alligators. Oh, oh my God! Jesus. Hi, my loves. No, <laughs> no. Let me start by saying I just absolutely love the show. No, me and the girls at Cheesecakes. No, <laughs> which is where she works. <laughs> yeah, she works at Cheesecakes. That's all right. Love to get ready for for our set while listening. Set. <laughs> Oh, make it stop. You all do such a fantastic job, especially that Pablo. What a hunk. <laughs> Thank you. I love to run my fingers through that bouffant one more time. Jesus. My question is, do any of you know Filomino's release date? He promised me he was going to pick me up in this IROC Z if I sent him one of my pole worn panties. Oh, come on, man. I sent him the zebra print ones that I wore when I... When I won first place by doing push-ups with my titties. <laughs> Jesus. This is a fucking wreck. I've not heard from Fuck him. I've not heard from him since. I love you all. 2020, I think he gets it. All right. There you go, Allie. Doji knows. And that's on good behavior. Yeah, I mean, so, that's assuming he doesn't get pinched with contraband. Right. Yeah, or, it's a shit show, man. Yeah. I mean, we can tell you when... when you know when they say, but if he acts up, I right. mean, we know he's running a store already, and that'll get <clears throat> you extra time if you get caught. So exactly, anything can happen. Anything can happen. I right, next one's from Vinny. It's from my boy uh, Ross Hawkins. He is a f- uh, Twitter follower of P Jiggies. He's verified, so he's he's VIP in my book. All right, my man from New Zealand. He's a skateboarder, IT guy. So my man. He says, Vinny, as an artist, what's your take on streaming music services? Do they screw artists over as Bailey as some people imply? Yes. Um, basically, really, everyone is eating off of streaming services like Spotify, except the artists. Spotify is eating, uh, obviously, you know, whatever they charge, $10, $10 a month or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the artists are getting percentages of a penny per play. Um, some artists have gone as far as to say, fuck this place. Like, you know, whatever you think about Taylor Swift's music or pop culture, anything like that, um, she got to a point where she's like, I've had it with this shit, and yanked her catalogs off of shit, which I thought was dope. So, yeah, man. I mean, but it's crying over spilled milk. I'm not going to change. If that's the way that people want to listen to music, I don't choose to listen to music that way. So, but I can't, I can't control or dictate how people how people choose to listen to it but yes it, it, it people get robbed thank you this one's from joshua hillard back in the day when you guys first started going to horror shows and started to really understand what it means to be there with the intensity of it all do you guys remember any moments of those early shows where you looked around at the madness and you first thought to yourself yeah this is what hardcore is this is what it's all about uh i'm thinking i'm not I mean, I just remember just going there and being like, first show, second show, and being like, holy shit, everybody looks like me. There's no fucking jocks here to fucking beat us up or anything. Like, this is our place, our spot, and the music was awesome, and it was just great. And you just felt like home. My my first hardcore show was being a hammer, going to see the Age of Quarrel era Cro-Mags in 86. And I had been to metal shows, which is a completely different animal. Like, they moshed at metal shows, but I had never seen anything like it. It was it was the scariest thing I ever saw. Like, I didn't go anywhere near the pit because, like, I didn't know. I mean, I was 13, I think. Um, but, yeah, it had a huge impact on me. Like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. But it was scary as shit. 
Oh, Jay, anything? Any memories? No. On being down in the scene when mm-hmm. we let you in to hang out with us? <laughs> That's how it went. Exactly. No. no, I don't. I don't remember. Has anything off top of your head right now? Um, well, be- the age difference was a huge thing for me. Uh, Sicko said like a fear factor was there for him. I I guess there was for me, but it was more an age thing. I definitely, like you said, felt like it it was cool to see, um, like other other kids that. Oh wait! A bunch of heads in here might skateboard, and a bunch of heads in here listen to music that's not what everyone at school is listening to, and shit like that. You know what I mean? But I definitely—I mean, I was so young and so little. I definitely—I had to be on my p's and q's, and and constantly be aware of my surroundings because I was like fucking ten years old, man. man. So it's like I—that's. I, my first impressions were probably fear, but that that good fear that I want to do this again fear. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean before you go to a hardcore show, you're going to like school dances where I, I mean, all the punks and skaters and whatever are going to hang out, and hip hop heads are going to hang out in a corner together. That's but you still got to fight the rest of the school. That's literally how it went down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I went to, like I said, I went to metal shows, which were much tamer. The other thing that I forgot to mention about the Chromag show was. That was the first time I had ever seen skinheads. Like I had no idea, yeah. like knew nothing, and it, that's that's a pretty imposing kind of sure. memory. The first time you see it, if you're not going into it, you know, expecting it. All right, last question is from Correct. Of course, it is. Where's he been all of my life? As you know, <laughs> I frequent a lot of sporting events, but mainly the sport of boxing. Yeah, because we know he's he works in the industry, right? He thinks he does. He's, all right. Usually, I buy the cheapest ticket for the event, which usually is in the upper deck nosebleed section. This is also true. But what I found is most of the expensive seats are usually empty. So after the second or third bout, I survey the scene and work my way down to the expensive seats. Is there a question? My question is, have you ever done this at a show or sporting event, and does this constitute a cheapo tip of the week? We're all in this together, buddy, and we love you. Okay. Can I, First can, of all, can I just say real quick, if it's a show, there's no seats. Uh, I've physically said watched boxing. him do this. Oh, I thought you said show a show or, or a sporting event. Sporting event. I yeah. have, with my own eyes, not via story, with my own eyes, watched him launched out of seats. No, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> I had great seats. He, him, and his brother <laughs> sat with me and Lenny, and he got rung up. So the Bob Euchre, I must be in the front row. Yes. So he is. Telling half truths. What a chet bastard! Um, he he buys nosebleeds and hopes that he can get up front. Um, you know, for a fight that might not have a mammoth or a star fighter, maybe you can pull it off. But therein lies the cheapo tip that Pablo may or may not agree with. That dice roll is for the birds when you hit a certain age. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fork over the extra clams and just know you're good. And I mean, if it's a sport that you love, like I don't understand why you wouldn't fork it over. And when it, when we, um, I don't think it's a cheapo tip because it's not a guarantee every time. Yeah, I think that's what he was saying. Like, so you're I, don't, I, the I dice. don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's a cheapo tip when uh, when we we for your birthday when we went to the Wachovia Center for the meet and greet with Sugar Ray. Yeah, we were. We were in the box seats, which were dope. We yeah. had the whole box with the open bar yes. and stuff. But then, as the as the night progressed, me and Q were were peeping, and we saw that the whole front row was empty. Yes. And this dude walked up, and he's hammered, and Q grabs him, and he's like, "How'd you get down there?" And the guy's like, "Just fucking sit on, pretend like you're talking on your cell phone. They're not checking t- tickets." So me and Q like opened our cell phones and pretend like we were having a conversation. Yeah, and I remember. And the boy like didn't say shit, and we like sat for the last two bouts. We sat in like the front row. I remember by the end of the night we were all down there, but again, it's like that was an event in a building that was way too big for the event with no stars on it. So if you're talking that type of boxing event, you're able to pull that off. You know what I'm saying? But we were at a Kovalev fight, a, a pound for pound guy. Him and his brother sit <laughs> what, with his. What they do? Up. What they do? They rung their asses <laughs> up. 
<laughs> he, that would be worth paying the hand on the more. collar, hand it. on the hand on the jeans. He does it. He has Uncle him. filled his ass. <laughs> they do it, and they do it. Not at, the jazz. They do it at every. He fucking does it at every fight. So I watch him get rung up at oh, every fight. That's awesome. The, the lady was like, all of a sudden now I like Cody Mack a lot better. I need to see your tickets, and I, me and Lenny just start cracking up because I know I'm gonna pull out the. <laughs> Official drones, and he has to pretend like he doesn't know what he's doing. He point out like a fucking gum wrapper. Right. Oh, exactly. God bless him. Must be in my other suit. Yeah. yeah, that's the gimmick. And he ends with, oh, and before I forget, fuck Cody Mack. <laughs> there it is. Look. Look.